Hello everybody, my name is Jenny Daniels and Dr. Robert Daniels. So today we are going to share with you guys what? <laughs> okay, wait, I will Hello everybody, my name is Jenny Daniels and this is Dr. Robert Daniels. Welcome to our channel. So go ahead, honey. Yeah, so um, I'm going to help my wife out here a little bit with her vlog and she wants to do a series about um, my health history. Um, I have a set of very rare autoimmune diseases and um, doctors had tremendous difficulty uh, diagnosing them. And in fact, I saw doctors for 17 years, I probably saw 40 or 50 doctors. Um, both private and military, and um, not one of them, they probably saw me three or four hundred times, not one of them made uh, the diagnosis. And so uh, over that period of time I became very sick. I was fecally incontinent, urinary incontinent. Uh, I could barely leave my home. I was pretty much a hermit. Uh, and I was incredibly exhausted. Um, and I had many other symptoms. And the important thing here is that I did something that a lot of people do out there. Um, and I, I did it for all the right reasons. Um, I was a poor kid. I wanted to get into medical or dental school. I had to work 40 hours a week. And the students I was competing against, for the most part, didn't. And so I made it a rule to stay up till 2 in the morning every, every day. Uh, to study and um, the way I did that was drink a lot of coffee and uh, I know there's a lot of people out there not just myself that are addicted to coffee and uh, I've met uh, several people that drink a full pot of coffee uh, eight cups uh, when they get up in the morning and continue to drink coffee throughout the day and so I was drinking a lot of coffee uh, because uh, I wanted to stay up and study, but it got to be a habit and, and I admit that I was addicted to coffee and over a period, a long period of time, I started to develop symptoms and I think I've interviewed a lot of uh, people and patients who are um, large coffee drinkers and virtually every one of them has similar health problems um, and so I'm going to list a few of the symptoms that almost every heavy coffee drinker has uh, right up front or develops right up front and that is esophagitis, gastric reflux, fatigue, unexplained fatigue, um, abdominal pain, unexplained abdominal pain, usually followed by diarrhea and cramping. Uh, so almost everybody that drinks a lot of coffee has those symptoms and I've interviewed many, many uh, people and uh, I can say just about 100% of them have that set of symptoms. I will interrupt you. Um, one, uh, one time, I think uh, 2014, I, was, I am very fan of Chris Aquino and then I told my husband that Chris Aquino really drink a lot of coffee because obviously I watch all her shows, TV shows and then she keep on mentioning that uh, she really have coffee all over from all over the world so I told my husband and he said he and she is she will be very sick and then I said mm. and then she said tell me uh, um, Tell me, uh, what, what did you tell me about that? I told, I told you that, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know Chris Aquino, but, yeah. but she's a popular uh, personality in the Philippines. Yeah. And she's apparently a coffee ambassador. People mm -hmm. send her coffee from all around the world. Uh, you know, um, apparently she drinks it, a lot of it constantly and so so I said you know One of these days. yeah no I said that she has autoimmune disease and then she told me that, uh, he told me that one of these days Chris Aquino will come out that yeah, she yeah, has that yeah. uh, that 
obviously, I think last year she come out that she has uh, autoimmune disease. Right, right. So years before she came out and said it, I said she has autoimmune disease. You can't drink that much coffee without corrupting your immune system. And uh, sure enough, uh, three or four years down the road, she came out and uh, she says that she has uh, generalized autoimmune disease. Um, what she has is spontaneous urticaria. Um, but yeah, so she is a, a typical example of somebody who drank a lot of coffee over a long period of time and ended up with systemic autoimmune disease. So with me, I have um, these autoimmune diseases. They're very rare. Um, and so um, doctors don't recognize them because they potentially have never seen a patient with these autoimmune diseases. Uh, but I have something called Wagner's granulomatosis, uh, dermatomyositis, and a thing called HLA-DQ8, celiac sprue. It's HLA-DQ8-DR3, actually. And um, it's the less common form of celiac sprue. And it's also associated with other autoimmune diseases like myasthenia gravis, sarcoidosis, um, and, uh, but, and, and one form of dermatomyositis. So here I had gone to, you know, so many doctors over a period of almost 20 years. They had seen me hundreds and hundreds of times. And even though I had these very specific autoimmune diseases, um, they, all diseases virtually have pathognomonic symptoms and signs. And I would walk into their office, you know, with these pathognomonic symptoms or signs where they could have made the diagnosis in seconds. Uh, they just simply don't recognize them. And um, so um, anybody who has autoimmune disease is going to have difficulty getting diagnosed. Um, ultimately, um, I finally had to quit my job uh, with the service. Uh, I was head of periodontal and implant surgery at uh, Rand or Luke Air Force Base and previous to that Randolph Air Force Base. Um, I told my doctor, the internal medicine doctor uh, at Luke Air Force Base, that I could not continue to work. I said, I'm exhausted. Um, I have, you know, all of these gastrointestinal and urinary tract uh, symptoms, um, you know, I just can't go on. And so I had to quit and uh, I moved up to a place called Los Alamos. It's up in the mountains, it's very beautiful. And, uh, you know, um, I decided that if I wasn't gonna get any better, I wanted to be in a beautiful place uh, as I became totally disabled. Uh, but the other thing was, is that at that point, I had given up on the medical system and I decided to take the case over myself. And uh, it took me about a year and a half to come up with the diagnosis I had mentioned. And, um, and uh, it was even after, even after arriving at the diagnosis, when I would go to doctors, they're so unfamiliar with these diseases that even though I was giving them the diagnosis, they didn't have to do anything. Um, they were skeptical and they were partially resentful that somebody who wasn't their specialty, the specialty that handles uh, autoimmune diseases is rheumatology. And so, you know, I went to an internal medicine doc, I went to a rheumatology doc in New Mexico. Um, they didn't have enough familiarity with the diseases. Uh, um, they seemed to resent the fact that uh, I was uh, presenting the, the diagnosis to them. And um, I was very lucky in that um, I was in New Mexico. There was one of the three or four most prominent specialists in the world uh, for these types of diseases and, and back then they were called mixed connective tissue disorders. Uh, now they're called overlap disease. Um, but yeah, he was in Colorado. I wrote him a case study and he was kind enough to call me. 
his name was Mark, is Mark Cohen, and uh, that's when I started treatment. He agreed with all my diagnosis, you know. Uh, he said, you're absolutely right, and that's when I started uh, uh, heavy chemotherapy with cytoxin, methotrexate, and uh, high, high doses of prednisone. And uh, how many milligrams? Uh, I was taking 110 milligrams a day of prednisone. And a new man. <laughs> yeah. So my point being is that uh, anybody who is drinking large quantities of coffee over long periods of time, I, I know there have been books written about other things causing leaky gut syndrome, but I personally believe that coffee is probably uh, the major culprit in causing people to have leaky gut syndrome. And, and then, then leaky gut syndrome, which is just a generalized inflammation of the mucosa of your gastrointestinal tract, um, that leads to get leaky gut syndrome because uh, your uh, immune system is being introduced to antigens and proteins um, that it wouldn't normally be subjected to. No, normally a healthy mucosa is going to protect you from uh, having your immune system being sensitized to foreign proteins. And so, uh, yes, um, I think, uh, the, the, you know, on our first lecture here, uh, I want to just uh, alert people that drink large quantities of coffee. And if you have those symptoms of uh, gastric reflux, esophagitis, uh, unexplained fatigue, um, gastrointestinal symptoms, uh, cramping, pain, leading to diarrhea, or bloating, gas, uh, all of that will be caused by drinking large quantities of coffee. That's it. Yes, I just wanted to add uh, that we're going to do further lectures uh, about how I solved the problem of my uh, uh, diseases, how I got treated, and how I got better. Um, and so, you know, look for our future lectures uh, about this subject, uh, and we'll be doing them sh shortly. Um, you said that you're supposed to uh, be diagnosed uh, 40 years ago? Yes, I you know I had symptoms um, that were um, characteristic of Wagner's when I was probably 29 years old, 28 or 29, and uh, I could have literally been diagnosed uh, and treated and lived a normal life. Um, you know, ultimately because I didn't get diagnosed and treat treated, it destroyed my life. I had a pretty good life at the time that I became very sick and um, you know I lost all of that because of misdiagnosis and and that's the thing that you know I don't want people to go through. I, I don't want them uh, to uh, lose the life they had simply because doctors are not familiar with autoimmune disease. Um, as I said if, if you go in and you have uh, symptoms um, on multiple organ systems, uh, your abdominal, urinary tract, respiratory tract, skin, muscles, joints, it's almost a hundred percent chance that you have autoimmune disease. And if you've been going to doctor after doctor after doctor, and they've never included that in their differential, um, you know, uh, you're going to have to find another doctor that's a little more enlightened, but you also have to become enlightened yourself. And in our second lecture, I'll go through the steps uh, and the information you need to take to your doctor so that you're more likely to convince him to do some testing and things uh, to uh, confirm that you have systemic autoimmune disease. So uh, hopefully you'll look forward to, uh, or view our future lectures about this and and hopefully I can help some people out there that have the same problem that I have had in the past. So ask them to subscribe. Please subscribe our channel. There, there. Please subscribe. <laughs> okay, bye. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, and thank you for watching. Subscribe, please. Thank you. Thank you.